What's up, Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models, and today I'm going to review this cool magazine that I picked up um, over the weekend. Uh, this is, of course, the May issue of Fine Scale Modelers, and uh, I've always purchased Fine Scale Modelers for a long time. Um, I think for about a couple of maybe a couple of years now, close to five, six years. And sometimes I purchase a, a new issue, sometimes I forget to get one, and I always, like, you know, maybe get a back issue or somewhat. But sometimes I don't get anything at all, and then I wait until something catches my attention. And this caught my attention because this was, of course, the sci-fi special edition of Fine Scale Monitors. And um, it has pretty much all... Uh, techniques and ideas of what to do with starship building. Now we're going to review this magazine and uh, try it out. I mean, check it out. It's a, it's a, it's re relatively cheap. It's only eight dollars. You can go just to Barnes and Noble, which of course you can find Gundam kits there as well, um, and pick this up. It, of course, even even uh, Star Wars kits. Actually, one, two pages here. Now, um, sometimes they're the fine scale modelers, modelers, which is of course the Klombach Hobby Store .com site, will have a special, like special edition um, magazine or books, you could say, for you to, you know, from famous builders on how they customize their kits and whatnot, whether it's a, f a model kit or a resin kit or a figure, you know, all the ideas are right here. We'll go through the contents. We're going to go through all this. Some advertisements. Squadron.com, a very, uh, very popular site for supplies and stuff like that. Back issues for those who want to look at old kits, uh, old magazines. Uh, this is a very nice art piece of uh, some some modern warships, but not too modern. More like um, pre. Vietnam, say, Vietnam era. Uh, hmm. LED lighting and effects. Now with user-made FX power cookies board dot com. I'll, I'll check that website. Micromarks. They make some, you know, sell some supplies there. Cult TV man. I've always go to their website to see some um, upcoming futuristic sci-fi um, model kits. Um, Here's the Star Destroyer by Ravel, which, of course, I was under the distinct impression that this past Mosquito Con show, I was going to see this ship at the show. But no, looks like nobody was into it. I was actually considering it, but, you know, that wasn't in the cards, you could say. Um, but, of course, we saw the famous 1999 ship over there. Uh, this usually this page is reserved for new product types, uh, new products from various brands. Uh, this one's from a brand called Azure From, F R R O M. One thirty fifth scale, one then goes to one seventy second scale version of kit uh, fighters. Um, Airfix always did like their brand. Here's some detailed parts for. Let me see the Mobius one forty four scale. Kit of the Discovery from 21, 21, sorry, 2001 A Space Odyssey produces a 41 inch long model and features a ton of great surface detail on the outside. If you want an ex interior, check out Paragraphics, uh, also known as www.paragraphics.biz. The detail company has specialized in a set of science fiction models that have released a pair of photo itch sets. To jazz up the ship, so there's some photo etch parts for the Discovery XD1. If you guys are planning to get it, it's, it says here it's forty nine dollars. I don't know how much, or hold on, yeah, forty nine. I see thirty two, but I don't know how much that Discovery is. See some tanks, one thirty fifth scale, one seventy second scale Abrams by a company called Flyhawk. While the other one, the tanks are from. Takum. Takum also has a spotlight over this uh, Japanese. Is that a Japanese or Type 94 tank? It. Yeah, that's a Japanese tank. One sixteenth scale. That's a big kit. 
small tank but big big in regards to size probably about this big uh, we got some figures for samurais we got some decals of various aircrafts we get the ships the 1700s got Prince of Wales and a one what is this this is a Kaga full hull version from Hasegawa I think that's a 172nd scale not a 1350 if it was it wouldn't be $75. Asagawa is a bit pricey. Some resin kits here, some resin parts here for um, aircraft and whatnot. And of course, some books and uh, documentation, reference materials. Uh, here's another company that does lighting, lightyourmodels.com. I'll have to review that and look at that. Humbrol. It's pretty much a British company that makes uh, paint, both acrylic and enamel. There's some cars here. Pretty nice. All right. All right. So converting a metal figure. Uh, oh, okay. So this looks like a Spock from from the from the movie versions of Star Trek and judging by me looking at this he he pretty much used a hobby knife to scrape off and shave off all the material that makes up the uniform that we all remember from the um, you know from Wrath of Khan all the way up to um, uh, Discover Country and he smoothed it sanded down brushed it and applied um, um, probably epoxy type putty and then turn it into the classic Spock that we all remember from the uh, 1960 series that's great that's a pretty cool idea on his part uh, ooh, detailing the Millennium Falcon with metal now the question is is this custom metal parts or is this metal parts that he just took from other companies now these are yeah, these are custom metal parts. That's a pretty penny for the for you guys to actually bend them and and and, and shape them, put them in specific areas of the ship if you want to detail the interior. More like, well, there's options for the interior, of course, but then you have the exterior. See, um, him painting the um the light the um the canopy. Yeah, here are the um the vents for the Millennium Falcon, which I never, I think my 144 scale, this is, is this the 144 or the 172nd? This is actually the 172nd, turn Bandai's 172nd scale kit into a beautiful hunk of junk. And it used those vents. Let's see, he masked them to paint the, the, the effect there. That's very nice. Of course, that reminds me of Chris's build of his Millennium Falcon, the one that the one three fiftieth scale version. So, I did my try; it was good. Don't think I'm going to do it again. Paint a Klingon bird of prey. One three fiftieth scale from AMT Ertl. Uh Let me see what he used here. He used, oh, he used Alaclad 2 Black Primer. I didn't see any at the show. And I do like the Black Primer. I think I might have to order it. And then what did he use? And continue use the Alaclad Plains Airbrush British Deep Bronze Green. Bronze Green. And then he painted the, what did he use for the red? He probably used a regular red color. But then he used a wash. After the red dried overnight, I used aqua gloss that was applied to top the panel to protect the vibrant hue of the subsequent green layer. Oh, okay. Because of the aqua gloss applied on top of the red panels, the green shades would... Okay, but, all right, I'm sorry, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Can I see he used, um, he used another Ella clad paint. He used steel. Followed by rust to do some streaking inside. 
and then he used another color here but I see a red color so I can't tell what he used the magazine the, the section doesn't show the bottle model numbers unless it's the one that I'm reading here that I didn't see that could be the rust hog or pig hog wash deep rust I'll, I'll review it lately their aliquad brands of paints has been changed through a new company so it's no longer the candy color and metallic there's other features and other color details so it's pretty nice using decals for camo this is actually for the figures and I see that he oh, okay he printed them out so you can apply it to rip to this character's uh, um, pants lighting up a firefly alright that's kinda cool this is pretty nice for those of you who guys want to put LED lights and especially on a, ma on a machine Kruger kit they're pretty much big enough and bulky enough to actually squeeze in a, a, a small LED light with a battery container or whatever um, or whether it has to be on the base as you can see here he's doing let me see if the next page goes uh, I see some some prepping there Oh, cool uh, masking for. I didn't tell if it was. Oh yeah, it, it's a light, a light um, camouflage type stripes. And then here is the circuit board, a chart for um, you if you want to use the colors. Nine volt battery, laser, cockpit, and thrusters. So he has one, two, three, four, thirty ohms resistors. I'm gonna wonder what voltage is the battery. Probably nine volt, probably three volts each. But if it's three volts each, you probably cut down the resistor so that way it's a lower voltage to accept the nine volt. Confirm that with me, guys, if I said that correctly. Firing up the Viper. This is a. Uh, what brand is this? Viper. Ba, 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 ba. Is he using the new one from Mobius or is this an older kit? He used LED lights for the thrusters, detailing the uh, cockpit. Oh, interesting. I kind of like how you did that. That's nice. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. He is actually using LED light sets from Christmas trees. That is cool. That is really cool. Then, of course, the soldering gun and how to prepare it. This, I have to, I have to read this in, in ad nauseum to understand this. Reader's Gallery. This is pretty cool. I see a MiG-21 made out of wood. Cool. A... Batmobile type car Iron Man painted uh, ATST is that from Bandai can't tell we have a nice X-Wing Red 6 Porkins oh Porkins fighter nice Right from Bandai, 170 second scale. And then we have a f classic uh, Flash Gordon ship. You all remember that. Then we have, then, you know, back down to Earth, we have a nice ZSU 23-4 Shilka uh, anti aircraft uh, platform. F 16. That's a th Thunderbolt. Yeah, P 47, but I see that it's referred to as the Black Panther. Another machine cracker, but this one's from Hasagawa, 120th scale. German 88 ca uh, carrier, uh, artillery piece. Semi truck hauling crushed vehicles, good. Build a brand new Tomcat. I have to admit, when I was at the show, there was a few Tomcat kits at 148 scale that really caught my attention good detail on this I was overall impressed I always wanted to build a Tomcat 
this was like way back when uh, I would say back in the 80s when I remember watching you know Top Gun and yeah back then Top Gun was cool and cool fighters and all that stuff and you wanted to get the you know you wanted to build the um, this this fighter this is more this feels like more like a demonstration of I see some or um, bombs instead of regular um, air defense a Persian very nice oh I see some using some putty I believe so he can oh he, he's probably do, doing battle damage where the metal is being warped and hit wait a minute I wanted to show battle damage imaging a shot ricocheting off the co-driver's position in front. I used a soldering iron to establish where the shell will hit. That's actually an interesting idea to use the soldering iron. We all try to do damage effects on our Gundams and whether you use a knife or or drill bit or Taking a piece of um, nail, putting it in, in, in um, on a stove top, heating it up, and then stick it in there in areas that you know you cause an impact or something like that. We all tried that, and that's a cool idea using the soldering iron. But then I wonder what would happen, what we has to do to stop it from the plastic melting to, melting to the point where the minute you pull it out, you don't have a long string of uh, plastic. He's using some paint here. He's using MIG paint. Yeah, wait, that's not MIG. Can't tell what that is. But he's using mud. He's using effects so he can turn it, you know, putting like mud effects or things like that. Alright, the next one is, of course, finishing the thun uh, Thunderbolt. And this is not a weather kit. Because he's using a lot of metallics. This is a 172nd scale kit. Pretty small, but still good detail. Here's a weathering of a World War I tank. Talk to he, the person pretty much talking to details on how to do this. Uh, okay, so reader tips. So people who have tips, they always put it on this section. Give you some ideas question and answers for those who want to send an uh, inquiry. Oh, I like that. It's going to be interesting to see the new Lost in Space series on uh, Netflix. So, reviews of certain kit, of kits that just came out, like this one 48 scale um, BF109G6. Good detail, though, by removing the panels and exposing the, the engine block. We have a M1 Abrams from a company called Panda, 135th scale. Retail on this is $56. Comes with 34 photo parts. 993 parts, but 34 uh, PE kits, PE um, parts. Uh, we have a wing nut. Wing nut Janayan Sal. I can't even pronounce that. But it's basically a World War I uh, fighter craft single wing not uh, that's pretty nice you have to admire the rigging though and the wires you have to put on this on this plane Ooh, we got a big ship here hobby bosses USS Alaska uh, it's probably a heavy cruiser or just a regular cruiser but it's really nice though and it's a big it's a big kit for how, much, how big is it let me see if they uh, indicate in inches uh, I see the historical documentation. Does I may have to read the whole thing. I don't see that here. But it's really nice, though. And we have a Mr. Schmidt ME262A 1A by Airfix. Airfix does really good kits. And I like, I always did like the box arts. Kitty Hawk AH6J Splitter Bird. Yeah, I saw a couple of the uh, some of those um, MH6 
uh, helicopters at uh, Mosquito Con. Then we have some advertisements for sale, wanted, miscellaneous, all that fun stuff. You want to look at things, you know, read up on it and all that stuff. Local hobby shops in your area. Uh, let me see here. In New York. Let me look at you. Magnolia in Candom. Huge foreign and domestic model selection. All scales. Kenville. There is a hobby in Kenville. But what? I, I always keep forgetting where it is. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. At Wonderfest, science fiction is for real. There's a, um, of course, big deal happening at the Wonderfest coming this June 1st to the 3rd. Unfortunately, I'm working that weekend, so I cannot make the trip to go to Wonderfest. It would have been nice, very nice, but can't win them all. So there you go. That's my quick, brief review of the May issue of, two, of uh, Fine Scale Modeler Sci-Fi Special. Hopefully you guys can get your hands on this, review this at leisure. You know, sometimes I would recommend a magazine to look at because looking at a computer can be annoying. Sit down, like in a, you know, in a couch, read this, ponder, have some ideas. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching and stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.